today is Tuesday, April 27, 2021. My name is Megan Carvajal. I'm interviewing Marissa Sotelo for the South Texas Archives at Texas A&M University, Kingswell. This is part of the Voices of the Pandemic Oral History Project in partnership with the Voices Oral History Center at the University of Texas at Austin. Please know, Ms. Sotelo, that this recorded interview will be placed in the South Texas Archives at Texas A&M University, Kingsville, and shared with the Voices Oral History Center at the University of Texas at Austin. If there is anything you do not wish to answer or talk about, especially given that your recording may appear online, I will honor your wishes. Also, if there is something you want to talk about, please bring it up so we'll talk about it. But if we are not conducting the interview in person, I need to record your consenting. So I'll ask you a series of six questions. Please say, yes, I agree, or no, I don't agree, after each one. There are four questions we need to make sure you agree to before we go on. South Texas Archives at Texas A&M University, Kingsville, wishes to archive your interview along with any other photographs and other documentation at the South Texas Archives at Texas A&M University, Kingsville. We will retain copyright of the interview and any other materials you donate to the South Texas Archives at Texas A&M University, Kingsville. Do you give us consent to archive your interview and your materials at the Jurgen Library at Texas A&M University, Kingsville? Yes. Do you grant South Texas Archives at the Jurgen Library at Texas A&M University, Kingsville copyright over the interview and any materials you provide? Yes. Do you agree to allow South Texas Archives at the Jurgen Library at Texas A&M University, Kingsville to post this interview on the internet where it may be viewed by people around the world? Do you grant South Texas Archives at the Jurgen Library at Texas A&M University Kingsville consent to share your interview and your materials with the, Vo the Voices Oral History Center of the University of Texas at Austin for inclusion in the Voices of a Pandemic Oral History pro Project, which will include posting the interview on the internet? If any one of these questions is no, then the deal's off. Hopefully you would have, no. <laughs> have many questions in pre-interview form that we have already filled out. We use that information for, from the pre-interview form to help in research. The entire form is kept in a secure server at the University of Texas at Austin. The final storing of the pre-interview form will be at the Te South Texas Archives at the Jurgen Library at Texas A&M University, Kingsville. We will have stripped out any contact information from yourself or your family members so that they will, so that will not be part of your pub public file. Your public file will only be as accessible at the Jurgen Library. Do you wish for us to share the rest of your interview in your public file available to researchers at the South Texas Archives at the Jurgen Library at Texas A&M University, Kingsville? Yes. On occasion, Voices receives, receives requests from journalists who wish to contact our interview subjects. We only deal with legitimate news outlets. Do you give your consent for us to share your phone numbers or your email with your journalists? Uh, <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> okay. So now we will go on with um, the interview. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Okay, tell me a little bit about your experience with COVID-19. Um, <clears throat> a little bit of my experience with COVID-19. Um, I guess it would just be probably about the average experience. Um, having to, getting, I guess, like first knowledge of it back in March, 2020 and learning about um, 
um, it coming about and then um, things shutting down and then it just kind of took off pretty fast after that. Um, <clears throat> you know, being in quarantine and then um, having to adjust to wearing a mask everywhere, um, adjusting to pretty much all life online and um, and then things sort of opening up and and then just recently in March 2021, I got COVID for the first time. Um, so it wasn't until about a year into it that I actually, I had been exposed multiple times, but I didn't actually get sick myself until recently, so. How did you first learn about COVID-19? Uh, I would hear people talking about it um, occasionally, um, but I think I just didn't really think it was that big of a deal. I just was like, that's kind of just another thing um, because years ago when like the swine flu and stuff like that was a thing, um, I had gotten that too and it didn't seem, you know, it didn't like take over um, and I feel like it got, it went away pretty quickly. And so I, I guess I just kind of thought it'd be something like that. Um, and I think I had first heard about it when it was just like kind of in like the Asian region. And I didn't think that, I don't think I thought it would make it here. And so um, <clears throat> that was kind of, I would just kind of hear on the news a little bit or hear people talking about it. Um, but then it was uh, on the news and over spring break of March, 2020, when I heard like more in detail um, of what it was and symptoms and things like that and how it was a world pandemic. So. <clears throat> what was your initial reaction to the information about COVID-19? Um, I think I had a, um, like I said, it was kind of like at first, didn't really think it was a big deal. But I think as I started to see how quickly things shut down and things were getting canceled, um, originally being from Houston, Texas, I that's where I was during spring break. And so um, to see kind of like a big city like that shutting things down and canceling like the Houston Rodeo, which is like a huge deal and things like that, I think... Um, seeing those kinds of things created a, a bit more, like more of a fear for sure. <clears throat> what point and how did you realize this was serious or do you not think it's serious? Um, yeah, during that time where things started like shutting down, I was like, oh man, like this seems like it's gonna be pretty, um, pretty serious. I think my parents had the news on like all the time. And so seeing that airports were shutting down and um, things like that, I think I was like, that was more of, okay, this is like a real thing. And it's, it's getting serious and it's getting serious fast. Um, so I definitely believe that it, it is serious. Um, I do think it's gotten better, but I, it definitely um, in the beginning, I definitely was like, this is, who knows what this is going to look like. <laughs> How has COVID-19 impacted you, your family members, your neighbors, your church, any organizations that you are part of? Um, COVID-19 affected our family um, pretty huge. Um, in October of 2020, my grandma passed away from COVID-19. Um, she was 80 years old and she had um, already had some like illnesses. Um, she was on dialysis for kidneys and things like that. So she definitely had um, other underlying issues. And, you know, they had made that known that elderly people who had other issues were more prone to getting the virus and less likely to recover. And um, so she, um, with having to have, she needed to ha be taken care of. She couldn't really take care of herself. So my 
um, aunts and uncles and my dad, they all would alternate taking turns, um, taking care of her. Um, but with that, you know, they were around other people. So there was always a risk of exposing her, um, but they couldn't not go take care of her. So she was exposed and she ended up getting it and um, went into the hospital and having to be put on a ventilator. And I think we kind of knew like once the ventilator happened that um, there wasn't a high chance of her coming off of that. Um, so we did have to say our goodbyes over video messaging and um, um, things like that. So that was really hard to do, um, not being able to see her and say goodbye in person. Um, so that affected us. And then um, I know for um, my parents to having to um, living in Houston, um, Harris County has been one of the largest like counties with the most cases in like the United States. And so um, <clears throat> having to work from home, um, they lived on, they had quite a risk of, um, or a fear, I guess, of losing their jobs. Um, thankfully they didn't. Um, and then uh, for me personally, here in Kingsville, um, it affected working with the campus. Um, campus did shut down for a while. Um, so not really, and working with, I work with a student organization. And so not being able to um, do all the things that we normally do and having to do things online um, and not really getting to be in person with students was was hard for a while. So. Um, you said that with the organization, like things changed, like what kind of like things um, changed that were not like normal anymore that, um, Okay, so I um, am a part of a Christian organization on campus. And so we have, um, I'm on staff with them. And so we have, um, they're kind of like church services on Thursday nights. And so we have sermon and worship. Um, and so students usually come and we have like around 80 to 100 students that would come. But be, when COVID happened, we had to go all online. <clears throat> so not being able to meet in person. So we had to do our services through live stream on YouTube um, and students just had to watch on their own um, in their dorms or houses. Um, a lot of students went home for the rest of the semester. So some were even in different cities. Um, <clears throat> also we have um, small groups. And so not being able to meet with our friends, um, we had to do a lot of meetings like that online um, through Zoom, um, our staff meetings or anything that we did, um, everything was over Zoom pretty much um, or live streamed um, like throughout the summer. And so until the campus gave us the okay to have, or you know, in the um, giving like the okay to have like more smaller gatherings where they did like 10 and 15 and stuff like that, so. How is it going out into the world during COVID-19 different from pre-COVID? Pre wow, um, very different. Um, having to wear a mask everywhere um, is super different. Um, took a while to get used to that. Um, still don't really enjoy it, but um, it's necessary. And so um, making that something that had, it was just normal, um, making sure it's something that you grab. When you leave your house, um, going out to restaurants um, where there's space in between you and somebody, a table empty between you and the table next to you or, um, Something I really miss is the movie theater, um, things like that. I think um, it's just going out bef like um, now versus pre-COVID, um, I guess would just, yeah, mostly the social distancing, um, which has kind of become normal now, so. 
How, if at all, has COVID impacted your ability to gather with family and friends for important events? Um, in the beginning, it impacted um, it pretty greatly with it happening kind of in March. Um, I guess the first holiday after that was Easter. Um, and so my family and I usually get together for that um, and have a big gathering. Uh, we didn't get to. So last year was my first year. Not and then when it comes to like, uh, when it came to like birthdays or different things like that over the, over the summer, we uh, didn't really gather together. Um, and if we did, it was everybody wearing a mask or we didn't gather inside, it was only outdoors. So, yeah. Has your family changed what you take with you when you leave your home? How about wearing a mask? How do you feel about that? Uh, yeah, I think the only things that we, it would be, yeah, that has changed is making sure you have a mask and making sure you have, um, keep hand sanitizer in every bag now and in my car. And so um, um, wearing a mask, I mean, it, I don't enjoy it, but it, I think it's helpful and it's necessary and if it, it um, makes people feel safe, then why, why not wear it? <laughs> How has COVID-19 changed the way your community receives education? Um, <clears throat> I guess with working with the camp, college campus, um, that's more so what I see rather than um, maybe like high school or um, anything like that. I don't really have um, anybody in my life that's in high school or middle school or elementary. So um, for college, though, I, I would say it's changed it a lot for all my friends who, are, who have classes um, and every having to um, change to online. Um, I personally, when I was in college, I didn't do well with online classes. And so I, I understood the ones who had trouble with online classes, um, cause there's just something about being in a classroom and having a visual in front of you. Um, I think that just makes you learn better and also getting to learn together with your peers instead of being on a screen. So I think that affected it, um a lot, just the way people learn. <clears throat> what kind of concerns or questions about healthcare have you, have emerged as a result of COVID? Um, I didn't, uh, not, none really, not for me anyways. Has it changed what you're doing with getting healthcare? Uh, yeah, I actually don't currently have health insurance, um, but when I got sick, I needed to go to the doctor, so I am now looking into health insurance. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, how, about, how about getting vaccines? Are there any problems registering? Um, have you gotten the first one or the second one? Uh, no, um, <clears throat> I'm not really a hundred percent about the vaccine. Um, so I am not really in a rush to get it, um, right now. Um, but I do have family members who have gotten it. My parents have got it, um, things like that. But I myself, no, I have not, I haven't, um, attempted to get it. How do you believe uh, politics affected how COVID has been handled? You know, I kind of try to stay out of that stuff um, because it just feel like it just creates conflict. So 
from what I hear or understand, read on social media, um, a lot of people, I think a lot of people think uh, that one party from the other um, cares more about it than the other. And, uh, but I don't really know. Um, you know, we're all human. We're all going through this for the first time. So nobody in, has been through a global pandemic that is um, alive. So I just feel like it's a learning experience from everyone, the president included. So, <laughs> How has COVID impacted your work? Did you lose work? Did you uh, lose pay? Did you receive a pay cut? Um, I, I did not lose work or receive a pay cut, um, but it, it just affected us by having to work from home um, and not being able to just be in personal contact with students. Could you explain more of what your new work life was like after COVID? Uh, yeah, so um, I guess like after COVID started, um, work just looked different from how with the online things, um, Zoom and live streaming and things like that. Um, and then when the um, fall semester started um, in August and students started coming back to school, um, it definitely changed uh, the way that we did things as an organization because there was a lot less students that came back to do school physically. A lot of students had the option to stay home and do online from where they're from. And so a lot of a lot just didn't come back. Um, so that definitely changed it as a ministry. We want to try to reach out to as many students as we can. And there just wasn't a lot. Um, so during the beginning of fall, uh, during Welcome Week, we always try to do some events and things like kind of grab students' attention, um, get them plugged in, and just to want to welcome them to campus and try to be their friend. And because of the um, different guidelines of how many people could gather, um, we were only able to have one event, um, and that just kind of changed the way um, we meet people and things like that, because also students, a, a huge thing we do is help new freshmen move into their dorms, and um, organ a ton of organizations do help, with, and they nobody was allowed to help. Uh, students were only allowed to bring one extra person with them to move in, and so um, we weren't really able to help move people in or things like that. So that is more so, um, I guess, of how it affected us. Um, uh, just the way that we would meet students or get them involved. And um, once we did meet a few new friends, um, it was kind of tough. There wasn't a ton of things to invite them to. And you never really knew if people were comfortable coming to your home. So it was kind of hard to try to create things that would make people feel welcome, um, but not wanting to overwhelm them because um, you want people to know that, that you care about their safety and keeping them healthy. And um, the thing about being around college students is um, it's not only them that are at risk, but if they were to get sick or something, they would take that back home to their families. So wanting to protect their families as well. Um, and uh, um, I guess that would be more of the things that affected our work would be, um, yeah, just the way we met students and um, affecting like the activities that we got to do um, and how we did them, so. What are your perspectives on going out? On going out? Yeah. Um, I mean, I do it. I <laughs> don't, I don't really um, think that, I mean, whenever they had us, you know, like 
advised us to not really go out and stuff. Of course, we wanted to honor that and the law and, you know, and do what they said. But once things started to open back up, um, I personally never really, um, never had, I never wanted to have like a fear of not going out um, and not being, um, I mean, I definitely, I mean, I didn't want to get sick. Um, so I definitely did all the precautions that they would tell you to do. Um, but I didn't um, really let that affect me, like not leaving my home. Um, because even though I just kind of think that even though we were in, we are currently in a global pandemic, we can't just like really let our lives be put on pause. I think they just are changing and the things that we do and how we do them. Um, but I don't necessarily think that it means that we should just let the world stop. So. With this last question, is there anything else you would like to share with me about your experiences with COVID-19 that I have not asked about? Um, I don't think so. Okay. Well, thank you for um, being here with me, being here and for this interview. You're welcome.